these radiators once a year, they get some mango. Look at that. Isn't that cool? She likes getting a little scratchy. This guy right here, don't tell anyone else, but my favorite. This is kind of fun. I get to show you guys all the different tortoises I have. He eats, he walks, he talks. He doesn't talk. Wow, this is a nice heavy tortoise. I love the cherry heads. I just love it. I love baby turtles. Oh yeah, look at that bright, beautiful baby red foot. Here's Lego, our favorite little goofy looking tortoise. Hey, what's going on everyone? Ken in here, and this morning, I've got some work to do. We've got the tortoise house. We've got Lobo making noise over there. I gotta keep him on a leash because right now he's running over and eating the tortoise chow, and I don't want him to do that because it's their food, not his. And so he's locked up right now on a, on a little leash. He's gonna have to hang out there, so you may hear him whining in the background, but we gotta just ignore that. Today, we're actually gonna do a tortoise tour. I'm gonna do this with the sulcatas, then I'm gonna walk around and we're gonna see all the tortoises and I'm gonna see if anything needs to be done. We're gonna get it done and we're gonna have some fun and learn about tortoises along the way. So that's what's going on right now, is all about the tortoises at the camp. All right, here we go. I've got some work to do because uh, we've gotta repair a couple of little beat up sections of the tortoise house. Uh, these guys kind of beat it up and they kind of nibbled on the insulation that I had. So I'm gonna fix that up just very simply, uh, remove some of this debris and uh, clean out the poops. All right, this place is cleaned. We battened down the hatches, everything's secured. I feel good about it. I mean, the only thing is I gotta touch that up with some paint to make it blend, but no big deal. Um, I like to just use reclaimed wood that I have around here. Let's shut this up a little bit. This thing's still heavy, if you remember this thing. I should have put like hydraulics on this, but you know, it's a good workout for the shoulder. Okay. There you go. So everyone's out playing with Lobo. We're gonna continue our tour, but let's talk about Sulcatas, man. These guys used to live way out back where the alligators live and where Slinky lives and Pinky and now Cayman Creek. And these guys lived out there for many, many years. I used to have that brown stable, but the camp's always evolving and always changing. And with tortoises, sometimes, um, you know, you don't wanna move them. Even moving them around the yard will kind of upset them to where they don't lay eggs as much as they used to. Um, that's happened with these guys. They took about a couple of years off this year. They finally settled in and they're really laying eggs again. We've got Hercules, he was a new tortoise. When you put a new tortoise in there, it also upsets the balance. And we're gonna see Lumpy in a little bit. Um, the other thing you have to note is that I did move 
the leprechauns into here. They're both females. They were laying eggs and just on the off chance, one of the sulcatas likes them. Maybe the eggs will be fertile, I doubt it, but here's one of the gals right now waking up. Beautiful tortoise. And since they're females, there's no real harm in putting them in here because the male isn't gonna get upset with them. He'll just appreciate them uh, as they are females. So we got that going right now, cool, very good. There's another one, uh, more blonde phase. And then if you hear, the water is cooking here. Not cooking, but the water is actually overflowing. You see that? That's how we have clean water in here for them. It comes on for about a half hour. It overflows. Once in a while, I'll just scoop this all out um, and they got fresh water in here. Even though they're desert tortoises, they need water. I provide water for them because that's what you're supposed to do, people. Let's do it. Let's check out our next species. And I think you guys know who they are. They're the radiated tortoises. And basically these tortoises I'm babysitting for a good friend of mine. I've had them for a few years now. And then there are three smaller juveniles that actually belong to me. Um, so right now, look at this. The uh, mangoes are shedding some of the fruit that aren't gonna make it. So these tortoises, if you look, these radiateds once a year, they get some mango. Now we just fed them some tortoise diet but these guys got themselves some mango and I just let them eat it. No big deal. Just let them do their thing. Here you go. What beautiful tortoises. Don't you guys think? Aren't they just amazing? I love these guys and they're from Madagascar where they are being uh, exploited for their beauty and a lot of them are winding up in China as pets. Um, the locals are taking these animals out of the wild because they fetch a pretty good price and unfortunately oh hey look who it is the wet lobo very cool lobo makes an appearance and unfortunately because of their beauty uh they are exploited um and it's a shame but uh this girl right here was one of the ones that i got sent from the turtle conservancy you can see she's real pyramided uh but she's so healthy she's even got the telltale signs of some covert oh look at this guys look at that isn't that cool she likes getting a little scratchy she stands up high that is so awesome so she's doing her thing standing up nice and high and getting a scratch i'll also see them do this in the rain when the rain hits their little shells they just get so excited that they stand up real tall and uh they enjoy the feeling so look at this how friendly is she huh i don't have a name for her you guys can go ahead and give her a name there's lobo we got a name for him my little wolf pup hey buddy there he is lobo loves to cool off in that water so very cool but yeah these guys have this whole area uh talking about how the camp evolves you know obviously we've got the aquascape ecosystems here these guys have fresh water they can uh always get fresh water and they're always able to uh hydrate which again is very important for these animals and um we also have sophia's pond over here which is doing great so there are 11 radiated tortoises that roam in this area they really enjoy it i enjoy looking out uh and seeing them do their thing we've got the eggs let's check the eggs I don't think anything's hatching right now. Nope, but the plants are growing, so at least I know they'll have shade and a little food when they do hatch. I can't wait to see that happen. Keep our fingers crossed. Looks like we're gonna have some rain today. Oh my gosh, but if we just step just a little bit over here, we've got three more tortoises that you guys know and love, and it is Socrates, Darwin, and Nostradamus. I gotta fill up their water, but they're about to get some rain, so maybe I'll hold off and just let them drink from the puddles. So Socrates I got in 2005 from a friend, Jerry Mata, who breeds sulcata tortoises. Um, and this is a beautiful tortoise. When I got her, she, she was much smaller, obviously. She was just about could fit in my hand. And uh, what a gorgeous animal, yeah? And so she's doing very well. And right next to her is our big girl, Darwin. There she is. That's a good girl, Darwin. I flew all the way to Marin County, California to get her. And uh, she's been living here since I think it was 2000. 13 maybe let's get this big old tick off of her they get ticks from time to time no big deal just pluck that sucker off we'll throw it in for the fishies here's another tiny tiny little tick we got that right before it started to really indulge on her blood so very cool tortoise uh she had her neck caught year um last year and i thought she was a goner but we went ahead and we saved her and to be honest after i saved her she's really just come around like she really loves me now she lets me scratch her she trusts me so i think in her reptilian brain she realized 
that I saved her. And that makes me happy that we could connect. And I'm just so glad that she's alive because she really is a beautiful animal. And uh, I'm so honored to have her and of course Socrates. But if we fly right up on over here, how about him? There he is, man, the boy, the big boy. It is Nostradamus. Now Nostradamus I got in 2004. He's an Aldabra tortoise. We're from the Aldabra Atoll in the Indian Ocean. And this guy right here, don't tell anyone else, but he's my favorite tortoise. I love him desperately. Just love this guy. He is incredible. He is friendly. He's always been a good boy. And um, man, I just think he is one of the most beautiful tortoises I've ever seen. That big, beautiful shell. You can see he got a little bit of damage right here. I don't know what happened. It's possible that a branch fell and hit him while he was walking around in the thicket. I'm not sure. But um, keeping giant tortoises is one of the greatest pleasures of my life. I just really, really enjoy these guys so much. They are truly a special trio of tortoises. And the cool thing is, is in a little bit, you're going to see we've got a little baby girl. Her name's Cersei. We're going to see a juvenile uh, Aldabra that I got from Florida turtle and tortoise, or from Florida uh, tortoise and iguana breeders, my friend Sam Pascucci. So let's head on out and move over here to the next tortoise on the camp. Um, this is kind of fun. I get to show you guys all the different tortoises I have, and uh, they're really special to me. So in this area right here, we're going to be looking for him. It's Lumpy. So Lumpy has to be on his own right now because he'll fight too much with Hercules. And I really don't want to deal with those guys fighting because a few years ago, you guys may remember that um, Lumpy had some serious issues. When I moved all the tortoises from the back pasture to the new one, Lumpy really didn't like it. And when he didn't like it, I didn't realize, but he stopped eating. Oh, look, he's eating now. He's just hanging out in this palmetto thicket. Hey, kiddo, he's been eating a little tortoise diet. Um, so what happened was he stopped eating, got real dehydrated, and I had to put a feeding tube in him with my friend, Dr. Mike Gillen from PGA Animal Clinic. And so we got him situated, and it took about two months of aggressive rehabilitation to get him back into fighting shape. So he's in good shape. I just don't want to stress him out by putting him back over in that area. He seems to like it here. He's got a water source. He's got food. He eats. He walks. He talks. He doesn't talk, but he does talk to me. Um, but then that would mean I'm crazy, which I am. Anyhow, there he is, my boy. Oh yeah, he's a wide awake. Sorry, I just want a little hug. I got him from my friend Mike Crutali uh, out in Long Island, New York, and he sent them down to me in 2004 when I moved here to Florida. So he came as a very small tortoise and he just kept growing and growing and growing. And now he's the big behemoth you saw. So I love him so much. He's very special to me also. Next up, we have the elongated tortoises. These guys are from Southeast Asia and I got them from the Turtle Survival Alliance. Uh, these were animals that were out of Vietnam. They were smuggled uh, out of Vietnam. Where are they? Where are they? Tortoise, anyone? Anyone? Tortoise, tortoise. There's a tortoise. Uh, they were smuggled out of Vietnam in the 90s as adults. So these are old animals. Uh, that's for sure. We have a tick on one. Um, oh, look at this. There was a tick trying to actually get through the scoots, which I've seen mosquitoes do. They can actually get their little nosies. I'm going to squish this tick. Let's just burn that tick there. A little arachnid, blood-sucking arachnid. And I think there was one. Yeah, I'm going to need tweezers to get that one off. But anyhow, the ticks, uh, as long as they're not riddled with ticks, uh, don't hurt them too much. And wow, this is a nice heavy tortoise. That's what you want. These elongated tortoises are nice and tough. They do very well here in Florida. They like the high humidity. Um, they take our dry season well. They take cooler temperatures very well. Here's a female right here. They lay eggs. I get some beautiful babies from these guys. And it's just a lot of fun to keep these guys. They're uh, a forest tortoise. They'll eat fruits. Uh, we're gonna have some mangoes drop in here for them as well. And they do good. So it's an awesome tortoise. Let's see. Who's in here though oh i gotta clean that out there are all there are all the cherry heads in there uh these guys are great i get a lot of babies out of them from south america they're basically a locality of redfoots that don't lose their red head and they keep that uh small size which is nice look at this they're breeding again we've got let's see is this a male yep that's a male there and that's a male 
breeding a female. And these guys, if you wet them up, they're real colorful. This guy's been damaged a little bit over the years, but uh, still fertile, still uh, producing offspring. And I love the cherry heads because they are just incredible. These are particularly old uh, specimens. They lose a lot of their color as they get real, real old. So these guys are just kind of hanging out. Uh, it's about to rain. So what's happening, uh, you can see some of the, uh, some of the semen from this guy. Um, interesting stuff right here. There's always something going on with biology in my house. And uh, it's cool to see life cycles happening. So we just saw the breeding uh, and then there'll be egg laying and things of that nature, which will be cool too. So I gotta, I just love it. I just love it. I love baby turtles, which we have, I'll show you. So uh, over here, we're gonna walk into Guapo and Lola's cage because I'm gonna show you the other tortoise on our tour. Uh, we met her potential boyfriend Nostradamus let's go see Cersei who has really just opened up and become such a wonderful tortoise um it took a little while oh she ate all the food you guys ate all your food didn't you she's always knocking down that stool uh where might she be let's do a little search for Cersei where is she there she is there's the girl right under here and again my friend Sam Florida tortoise and iguana breeders he really helped me out by getting me this female um I love her she is a gorgeous girl and she is going to be a welcome addition and in a few years hopefully we put a lot of size on her probably about 10 years she'll be old enough uh to hang out with nostradamus and maybe oh i'll be having some babies of my own aldabra tortoise babies so stick around it's a long-term breeding project i hope to still be making videos in 10 years that would be awesome would you guys like to see videos in 10 years watch everything as the camp evolves i mean let me know in the comments below do you guys enjoy this do you love seeing how the camp has changed i think from seeing all these different animals and looking at old videos you can see how much work has gone on here at the camp all right we're winding down our tortoise uh, expose here at camp Kennan. and we're gonna move over to some baby redfoot tortoises right now these animals are just hanging out in their little abode here's one here's a baby cherry head and that cherry head is eating some uh, eating a little bit of the dried up lettuce from yesterday, but we've got baby tortoises everywhere. And I'll bet if I open this up, oh yeah, look at that bright, beautiful baby redfoots. It is redfoot egg hatching season, and uh, it is just delightful to see so many of these animals doing well. So there is what happens when you have successful egg incubation, successful breeding, successful egg laying. I'm not going to show you Cayman Creek. I'm not going to show you. Uh, next time I you see Cayman Creek, they're going to be Cayman. Uh, and so finally, my friends, we're going to come on over here to the Redfoots. You guys remember the Redfoots used to live where Lumpy lives, actually in a smaller area. And uh, I just got bored. The Radiateds lived here. We play musical cages. I move things around. I think I'm finding what I consider to be a cool equilibrium. Uh, this has truly been the best place for the Redfoots. They love hiding under bushes. Okay, so there's two right there. One's out. I throw all this... Uh, stuff that i've been using or rather plucking you know i pluck the weeds from up top just toss them in here what they eat they eat what they don't decomposes it doesn't bother me at all look at that beautiful red foot she's got a bright yellow head she's got those red feet and uh there's another one over here we've got 35 red foot tortoises in this enclosure some are in the house but a lot of them probably are hanging out under here look at that big old boy right there it's so cool man I love the fact that I keep these animals. These are animals that do well in Florida. And you guys may remember, I've had other species of tortoises over the years. We've had the mountain tortoises. We've had star tortoises. We've had the Greeks, the Hermans. Um, now, the Burmese stars, uh, Burmese mountains, um, I did get away from because I wanted to kind of downsize a bit. So those animals went to new homes. Um, the Greeks and the, the Hermans and some of the marginateds, I also did um, sell off. Uh, because I wanted to downsize because I knew I was going to be doing things like this uh, after talking to Fred uh, he, when he told me that I'd be taking over some of his animals. I knew that I had to keep my, my um, workload uh, stable, that I can handle this on my own. And I can. It's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun. You see, I'm sweating here. It's definitely summer again uh, here in South Florida. Uh, a little bit early, earlier than up north. But anyway, um, so things change and I focus on animals that I know will do very well in Florida so that I don't have to stress out too much. We've got little tadpoles and fish in here. We've got tortoises living in there. They've got a nice area to live. This is a very cool cave 
that has just kind of happened here in this aquascape ecosystem waterfall. Right here is a big tree trunk and uh, the tortoises have kind of hollowed it out and they use it as a resting area. And here's Lego, our favorite little goofy looking tortoise, right? There she is, she's doing well. So, I mean, I love these animals. Now, there are actually a few bucket list tortoises that I want to get. Um, I'd love to get the Burmese star tortoise because they do very well here in Florida. And I'd love to have a colony of them one day just doing well because um, I do love star tortoises, but the Indian stars, they don't do too well. Um, and what else would I like? Gosh, that does well in Florida. I don't know, maybe one day again, get the mountain tortoises, but um, right now I have more than enough tortoises to keep me busy and happy and I just love hanging out with them and we get to see little Lego and we get to visit with these beautiful redfoots and all the tortoises here at Camp Kennan and you guys have seen this place evolve with tortoises and it will continue to evolve because I love building enclosures and seeing these animals interact with them. So there you have it everybody, a fun day. Look at this gal coming out to say hello. So much fun here watching these tortoises do their thing, wander around these beautiful enclosures. And uh, thanks so much to everyone who helps me out, you guys for watching the videos, Aquascape for always helping me out building beautiful enclosures for these animals to live in, and uh, my family for helping me, uh, like Sophia and Leo helped me out today uh, to fix that up, and Kate for helping uh, train Lobo. I'm really, really happy to have such a great family that is just a great team. And you guys are part of that team. So thanks so much for being it. I love that you guys watch these videos. I hope you enjoy them. And if you want to help out further, head on over to patreon.com slash where you guys can get more content and help us make this place even greater for our animals. See you all soon. Bye.